The first boat in the 37th America's Cup, Alinga Red Bull Racing's Boat Zero, has been launched in the venue of the races, Barcelona, Spain. Boat Zero is the highly modified first boat built by Emirates Team New Zealand for America's Cup 36. It's like a Christmas uh, for us today because we can see the boat in the water for the first time. There is still a lot of uh, work to do to be able to sail it, but uh, everyone uh, on the shore team and the design team are working really hard to, uh, to give uh, birth to the, our first uh, flight. 
Barcelona. We are in Barcelona and today uh, Alinghi Red Bull Racing did the boat zero christening. So it was a, a step, big step for the team, a big milestone achieved. So we are all very happy and proud uh, from uh, our short team and uh, yeah, very, very glad to be here. So this boat, it was a, originally it was a boat one from Team New Zealand from the previous America's Cup. So uh, Alinghi Red Bull Racing uh, bought it and, and has been preparing it uh, the last few months. The short team did a, an amazing job, have been pushing a lot of hours to, to make it possible and, and, and yeah, there she is. So we're in Barcelona today because the, the America's Cup will take place in 2024 here just in, in front of the city. And today was a big, big milestone. We splashed our first boat. Uh, our first AC75 and uh, yeah, we're gonna, gonna need every, every day to prepare for the race in uh, two years time. Yeah, so really looking forward to seeing the boat, like the whole uh, Lingi Red Bull Racing team has uh, put in a huge effort to get the boat ready and uh, yeah, now so hit the water uh, first time today and uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing that boat uh, next couple of days hopefully. Uh, so we're gonna test all the systems and and then uh, it's go time. So it was my first time actually doing some uh, parkour in a boat. So I was a little bit nervous before because I didn't know if the boat is going to be stable or like, I didn't this want is the to break. And, uh, but on when water. I get here yesterday, Highlights of the it was sport of sailing so good. Globally. It was really stable. In the last seven and, uh, days from August yeah, 19th, 2022. I think I can do more cool things in a boat next time. It's not looking good for Emirates Team New Zealand's land yacht program as the lake in South Australia on which they are intending to use, as their test bed is still covered in water. Glenn Ashby reports. We just arrived uh, last night at uh, Mount Ives Station. We're basically heading out now um, to the lake itself, Lake Gairdner. Hopefully the, uh, the surface of the lake's actually gone down a little bit from what we've seen previously, but um, we do know that there's still a little bit of water in there, but um, just going out to check it out and um, get a bit of a feel as to when we should be uh, coming up here and, and, and actually setting up. to 80 mils higher here than it was four weeks ago. I think the fact that the water's been sort of sitting further up the lake and last week it's really been from sort of the northeast even, it's just sort of blown it all down into this southwestern corner, which is where we're obviously trying to operate. Getting up in the air was absolutely uh, fantastic. Really to see the vast majority of that dry was sort of super exciting, but then it was also quite, quite frustrating. It was just this really small stretch of water that is actually just down in that southern area. You've got to be prepared to have, you know, a few setbacks along the way. Mother Nature will provide us the right opportunity uh, when she's ready for this world speed record attempt. Looks like we're going to have to be patient before we get out on the lake. The seven-star round Britain and Ireland race is beset by light winds. Pip Hare in her new Amoka medallia is leading and has passed the top of Scotland. It's been a drift and crews are beset by a new problem, running out of food. Yes, we rounded Muckle Vlogger about uh, three hours ago. Very, very, very happy <laughs> to see that bit of land. Um, it's been, uh, well, I mean, we never would have imagined it was going to take so long to get up here and you know it's been just challenge after challenge in terms of you know finding the wind and getting the boat going um so very high spirits to make it round um we're now currently beating down the um east coast of shetland in sort of fairly similar conditions you know, it's a light to moderate breeze, very fluky, um, you know, and I think it's far from, far from over. It's still very challenging um, meteorologically for the last bit of the race. Looking forward to hooking into this low pressure and just getting some miles underneath us down the North Sea. Um, but then it, it all gets a bit complicated after that. 
Um, so, you know, we, we are still kind of with the same mindset of, of picking our way through um, these complicated weather systems. And it is really complicated. If you, you know, look at a synoptic chart at the moment, all the fronts and different centers of pressure all over the place, it, it's, you know, it's a challenging place to sail at the best of times with tide and traffic. And But the weather at the moment is, you know, another layer on top of that. So, you know, this is, always been a challenging race and that's one of the reasons why i entered it um but you know this is kind of taking it to another level um but yeah it is downhill from here we're looking <laughs> we're really looking forward to the finish um we've got enough food uh but the the choice is beginning to diminish as all the ones that people didn't want are uh, are left in the bag um but we haven't got to fisticuffs yet however we're fairly sure that um certain people are stashing things around the boat <laughs> we'll see um but it's all good we are all happy When we left, we were thinking kind of six to seven days. The routing was having us back, I think, on the on the 14th in the morning. Um, and now we're looking at a 10, maybe 11 day scenario. Depends on, on uh, how much of a sleigh ride we get down the North Sea. Uh, so obviously that um, has posed some challenges to us. One of which was that we kind of prepared, well, I provisioned for nine days. Well, we are into our last bag, day six to nine. Um, so this is all the food we have left. It does, it does look like quite a lot, um, but we're gonna rip through this quickly. So what I'm doing now is just sorting through, trying to avoid um, the temptation for people to kind of eat a bit too much of the, of the main meals, which seems to be popular. We've, we have clocked that Ben the Navigator is quite thrifty when it comes to sorting through and finding his favorites um, and uh, yeah so we're kind of um, we've got plenty of tea bags that's not going to be a stress plenty of desserts but the kind of hearty main meals um, we're going to be a little bit short on so we're going to probably cut out uh, a sort of a lunch meal each day for the next couple of days just to make sure we've got you know food at the end clearly the last day we could go without much food anyway um, Um, there are certainly some people that seem to have strong preferences, others who are just grateful for what they can have. Um, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, the, this crew so far has been very harmonious. Um, in light winds, quite often you do eat a bit more at sea. I think when we get you know, the big breeze down the North Sea, and it's actually pretty difficult to cook. The people tend to be a bit lazy and eat a bit less anyway. Oh, well, um, if you're going on calories, then I think spaghetti bolognese is a bit of a favorite, a solid thousand calories, quite easy to eat, goes down well. Um, there's a couscous in here somewhere, which everyone seems to like. Um, probably the stealth option is the posh baked beans. That actually is kind of, I don't know, it's got some kind of potato fritter thing, um, all sorts of funky beans. So it's actually not very British at all. It's um, yeah, much more Mediterranean, so that's a hot favourite. Ben would do anything for Asian noodles. Yeah, Asian noodles. In fact, um, I think we've been swapping that with, with you, Pip, haven't we, for the, the fish and parsley sauce? Yeah, I will, I'll trade. I'll trade for a fish and parsley sauce, anything with anyone. Um, there's a few favourites. I think there should be some biltong in here, although, uh, strangely enough, I can't find any. So that might be, <laughs> I might be out of date there. Um, I think we've got one thing of oat milk, milk, 
one of uh, semi skimmed left so should be enough for our tea with a bit of a panic earlier we thought we were out of tea but we've got another bag um, probably more of a stress for Pip and I we drink a lot more tea than the other watch Um, well, as long as the water maker keeps going, we'll be fine. We're obviously fortunate that this boat's set up for kind of ocean crossing. So, um, yeah, I think some of the other boats probably don't have water makers. So for them, it'd be a bit more of a concern. The final day at Airly Beach Race Week, where a record 178 boats are taking part, concluded this week. Ross Chisholm, the Whitsunday Sailing Club's event chairman says a good way to finish off the regatta was with mainly south or southeasterlies of around 16 knots. The event suffered with light winds, and we have the opening race. A stunning day for the Early Beach Race Week opener. A mass start of 178 boats on Pioneer Bay, in winds of 15 knots from the southeast, blowing down on those taking part in the Whitsunday Sailing Club's marquee event in the scenic Whitsunday Islands, then petering out for the second line, making for an interesting day and some surprise results. Once the start was dealt with, the IRC, ORC Division 1, PHS Racing, Multihull Division 1 and Cruising Division 1, sailed a 23 nautical mile course taking in Double Cone and Gumbrel Islands, Brimston to the finish. The remaining divisions, barring the F-16, F-18 and Wetters, also sailed a 23 nautical mile course, but were caught at the start as the breeze faded to almost nothing. Their course slightly deviated on the other, going from Double Cone to Armit Island, Brimston to the finish, while the off-the-beach classes sailed a separate course taking in the Whitsunday Islands. Robbing word as coconuts, a stealth 12.2, topped the multi-hull racing Division 1 leaderboard today. The classy field includes extreme 40s, M32s and other big multis. Coconuts is a cruising multi, so her Grand Prix rivals were most impressed by Ingwerda's performance today. Michelle Van Zwaard skipped the Extreme 40, Angus, to second overall, while slippery sailor Rohan Veal helmed the Marstrom, M32, to third overall. Division 2 went to William Richards KC, a GBE sports deck cat from the host club. Darren Drew's win cheetah from New South Wales claimed second place and Peter Hackett's full ball was third. In the multi-hull passage division, Mark Gerrard's Storm Bay stole the show by just over a minute from Glenn Rutherford's Earthling, with Stephen Leonard's Sea Dragon third. Ray Hollywood Roberts stumped up in first place with his boat in 40, Team Hollywood. In second was Captain Anthony Kirk's latest Enterprise, named Enterprise Next General. Andy Kiernan a Peter Wrigley's TP-52, COA, filled third place. The final day of the 505 Worlds in Ireland also started with no wind and again the wind filled in from the northeast out to sea. Today the conditions were better than previous, with the wind filling in slightly stronger and holding for longer. Nearly all racing was conducted in 10 to 12 knots of wind.
Dave Caleb Payne, 2022 Cork Island 505 World Champs. How do you feel, boys? Oh, fantastic. We, uh, <laughs> you know, we didn't really expect this. And, uh, Came together awesome, Absolutely. you know. Yeah. What do I feel like? I feel like a world champ. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's my philosophy. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Right. Now we're getting some on the feeling. I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, you can party once the once the work's done, you know? Yeah. Well, congratulations, boys. It Thank was you so it was much. a convincing win, you guys. You know, it looks like you pulled a stock boat, stock sails out, and so you just yeah. sail better, you know? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Just, uh, you know. Lots of racing experience and used it to our advantage. And, uh, you know, obviously, pairing up with Stu has been great. And our, most of all, our coach, Dave Hughes, who was uh, a vital asset to our team. You know, there the guy is, still working away. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach Hughes is world-class coaching. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's the man. He's the man. There you go. So, yeah. Coach Hughes, world-class coaching. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the Barcarati, the Barcarati curse. We yeah. Told, we told you. you called it. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, no. It sounds like you need to start selling that. Yeah. Yeah, spot, well, you know? everyone that comes on the show wins. It's you know, happens. usually the worst thing you can do is talk about your race right before it, but, yeah. you know, Bar Karate's figured it out. So. <laughs> and you guys have too as well. It was an amazing performance. It was, Thank you. You Thank looked you. formed from day one, and then you were able to go through the range today. I wondered how you go with the windy stuff, and it was just beautiful to watch, like yeah. you were on fire. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, congratulations. All right, see you when we get in. All right, well yeah. done, boys. Catch you later. All right, so thank you, you Mark Ferrati. Like Caleb and Stuart there. <laughs> and your dirty underwear, don't forget the dirty right, underwear. Absolutely. <laughs> we now get the change. <laughs>
and it's very easy for the smaller sailors to pull in and out of the water and it makes it incredibly exhilarating when you're sailing. It really accelerates very nicely and it's very responsive with its carbon rig and its lightweight hull. So I think the RS-05 is maybe 60 to 65 kilograms. I think the RS-06 is about 65 to 72 kilograms. And I think the RS-07 is maybe 73 to 83 kilograms. And then from 80 kilograms upwards, the Aero 9 is very exciting, especially when it is windy. From the cover on, it is three minutes. Maybe if I change a rig from a five rig to a six rig or a six rig to a seven rig, maybe there's two more minutes. So it is three minutes to rig, five minutes if you have to do a whole rig change. Yes, it's lighter than the Optimist, and it's possible to lift it onto the car roof just with one person, one end at a time. I think an important thing is the fact that a very small lady can pull the boat up a steep slipway at the end of racing, and because the boat is so light, they, can, they are, have a physique to handle it. It has carbon in it and it has epoxy in it. And all of the shapes and the flat sides is designed to minimize the area, surface area, to keep it a very lightweight design. The design is good, it's got a good planing surface at the back. The gunnels keep the water down so you don't get splashed in the face. The chime here means that it's very equal for different weights of sailors and it keeps the water down so it's nice and in your salty water, the waves stay down. Um, the main tooth is all in the middle, so the main does not get caught over the back corner of the boat. Uh, we have a blue button, the blue, magic blue button, which releases the rudder, which is very safe. And the foils, at the back of the foils, are beveled just on one side, not on that side, which means when you're planing very fast, the boat is silent. So you can go at speed and very quietly. The Aero is very tough and strong breeze. We go out in 30 knots in Lymington, and as long as you use it correctly, you can bounce over waves, you can nose dive into the front of waves, and the mast is super strong, the deck is super strong, the boat is super strong. It is epoxy and it is carbon, which is stronger than polyester. So the boat is very light because it's lightweight materials, but these materials are stronger than alternative materials, which are heavier. So in, in important places where the structure takes place, there is carbon. Its carbon is wonderfully light and wonderfully strong.